don't trust, verify is a bit of a motto that you'll hear from time to time, particularly when it comes to self-custody. And it's all well and good to run open source software or DIY hardware, but do you actually know how to check that what you have downloaded is the real deal? Simply downloading from the official website is actually not enough. And while your operating system can actually do a pretty good job of verifying the software you download and run most of the time, for things like self-custody wallets where there is simply no margin of error and where they are a huge target, for scammers, uh, it's really important that you know how to verify the software you are downloading and running. So in this video, I'm just going to run through a few different ways that you can verify the software that you are downloading to make sure that it is the real deal. In the first part, we're looking at verification using SHA-256 checksums as well as how we can do that socially, which is a quite easy thing to do. Looking at how we can verify Sparrow manually uh, using GPG for Win. Looking at Sparrow's powerful download verification feature and how you can use that to verify a wide array of other useful projects. And finally, we're running through how to verify Electrum just because it's a approach for uh, signatures is a little bit different uh, to what Sparrow does. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe, and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. So first we'll just talk about SHA-256 checksums, a simple tool that you can use on just about any operating system or device quite easily that is an important building block for everything that will come next, but is also still powerful on its own. Basically what this kind of checksum is essentially a process where you feed a file in one side of the algorithm, it will do some math on it and spit you out a long and unique number based on the file that went in. So the same file going in will always produce the same checksum coming out. And you might have seen these sorts of numbers on various uh, things that you might download. So for example, this is a Foundation Passport firmware release that shows you the SHA-256 uh, sum and the MD5 sum of the download, as well as some commands on how to uh, produce them. So for example, if I just download this file here, the file right there. So this is just a fresh install of Windows 11. So if I just right click on that folder and just say open in terminal, basically that will give me a PowerShell terminal at my downloads folder. I can just type cert util hash file v2, there we go. So if I start typing knit tab passport.bin and say sha256, it will basically just give me the hash of the file just like that without having to install anything else at all. And if we scroll back up, we can see that the hash that we should get matches exactly the one that I got on my computer when I downloaded it. The key thing that makes SHA-256 checksums really powerful and useful is that you can run a SHA-256 sum on just about any operating system or device you have, including on some hardware wallets. For example, if I just take this firmware file and just stick it onto a micro SD card and stick it in something like a foundation passport, go down to advanced, go down to micro SD, list files, and basically I can just click a tick and say I want to see the info for that file. And it will actually generate a SHA-256 on that file independently of the PC, which you can see is identical to the SHA-256 sums that I generated on this Windows PC and what I expected from the website. And while it's important to say that simply seeing the checksums match what is on the website on its own doesn't tell you who created the file or anything else like that. It does allow you to be able to check against multiple different places about what the checksums should be, to check with multiple people, uh, maybe people you trust, maybe people who have been able to do the GPG verification themselves, or maybe even other systems that you have where you've been able to, you know, check the signatures uh, and to be able to verify on a smaller and simpler device, you know, something portable even, like a hardware wallet, that the checksums match and you're all looking at the same files. Though for this specific example, the key thing to keep in mind is that retail hardware wallets like the Foundation Passport do their own hardware-based verification of the firmware before, you know, flashing it and running it. Though again, for DIY things like Seed Signer, uh, you really need to make sure you're taking the time to verify the firmware that you're running on your device. But what if you don't have any friends or don't want to talk to anyone? In that case, something like using GNU Privacy Guard that is GPG can allow us to verify that not only is our download intact, but that it was the file that was published by the author of the software that we expect. So I'm going to run through how to use that. So I'm going to do this on Windows and basically just go with GPG for Win, which gives us a fully featured Windows version of GNU Privacy Guard. So basically we will just download the latest version of that. You can send a tip to their Bitcoin address to support the ongoing work of this tool. There we go, tip sent. So now we can download the tool. 
On the topic of checking integrity, they actually give us some instructions about a few different ways that we can do that. So there is a bit of a chicken and the egg issue here with this in that you will need someone or something to help to verify your initial version of GPG is legit. For the sake of this video, I'll just be going with using the official signed code that Windows will check for you when you run the installer. So basically, if we run that, we will actually get a UAC pop-up that tells us about where the file came from and who signed it. And we can see that same information that we saw before about the certificate and make sure that is all what we expect. And if we're happy with that, we can say yes. And just install it with all the defaults. And then when it's done, I'll just say next and we will run Cleopatra because we are about to use it. So the very first thing we are going to do is generate a new key pair that we will use in Cleopatra to sign and verify the other public keys that we will import into it shortly. And the name and the email address here can be anything, it's only for your system. And by default, if you click on the advanced options, you'll see this certificate will be valid for a few years. You don't actually need to go changing any of this stuff, so you can just say OK. And basically what is gonna happen now is it will create a new key pair. And there we go. And you'll see that that key is certified and it's basically just self-certified there. And basically this is a certificate that will be used to certify any other certificates we import. And if we want, we can actually add a passphrase onto it because by default it doesn't have one. So I can just click change passphrase and give it a new password. And basically this password will be required then anytime you wanna add uh, additional keys and mark them as trusted into Cleopatra and I'll show you what that looks like shortly. So I'll just say OK. There we go. Passphrase changed successfully. So what we can do now is we can head over to the Sparrow website and basically we can download a few things. Firstly I'll just download the uh, Windows installer. I will download the signature, the manifest signature and I'll download the manifest. I'm also going to need a copy of Craig Raw's GPG key because he is the one who is the maintainer of this. So basically we're going to need this RSA key here which ends with 74B40. So we can actually, and we can go onto Keybase and just click on that there. And if we just go onto this key and just right click on that, we can just say save link as, and it will actually just save this GPG key that we want. So I can then go into Cleopatra. I can say I want to import a public key. I'll go to my downloads folder. And because I didn't change the file name of that key, it's this one here, pgpkeys.txt. So I'll just double click on that. And it will actually ask me, do I want to certify this public key? So now this question of whether or not you want to certify a public key you are importing also requires a bit of a social process in that you could verify, for example, on a public group on say Telegram, Reddit or something else and just ask people, you know, what is the correct fingerprint for uh, Craig Raw's uh, signing key for Sparrow? You, you could do something like jump onto their Twitter profile and actually see what it is there. We can see here that this key ID here that I'm trying to import at least least matches what is on uh, his public Twitter profile and this Twitter profile wasn't just created yesterday. So I'm just going to go ahead and say certify and I'll certify it with the certificate that I just created and I'll say certify. It's going to ask me for that passphrase that I set before for my certificate. So I'll just type it in and say OK and we'll see now that that goes from being not certified to certified which means we can now use this certificate to verify downloads. So now I can go here into my downloads folder and I have these two files so I have the manifest.txt and I have the manifest.txt signature. So if I right click on this manifest file say show more options and then go more gpg ex options and say verify it will just sit there and think about it for a minute Oh, there we go. It didn't actually pop up. So because I already had Cleopatra open, it popped up behind the window. So because this is green, it tells us that this signature matches uh, the contents that should be in this manifest file and that it was signed by the official signer for Sparrow Wallet, Craig Raw. So that is good. So what that means, I can confidently open this file up, Sparrow 2.12 manifest and I can see a list of SHA-256 sums. So basically what I can do then is say, okay, I downloaded Sparrow 1.2.1.msi, that's this one here. So I can just go back into my command prompt, the same one that I used before, and if I just press the up arrow, that command will come back. And if I just change that to say, change that file name, Sparrow 
2.1.2.msi and hit enter, I can see that the SHA-256 for my computer matches the SHA-256 that was in the signed manifest file. And this tells me two things. It tells me that the Sparrow installer MSI that I downloaded is completely intact, that is great. And it also tells me that because the SHA-256 sum matches the list of official verified SHA-256 sums from the official maintainer of the project, I can be confident that the file I have is the one that they produced. So I can go ahead and install this. Now I'll just install Sparrow and stick with all the defaults. So, having fully verified and installed Sparrow, the next thing I want to show you is how we can use Sparrow to verify not only future uh, installation files for Sparrow, but also other wallet software and hardware. It's an extremely powerful feature and it's really easy to use. Basically, if we are in Sparrow and we just go Tools, Verify, Download, we can do things like, you know, browse for the Sparrow that we just downloaded. So I'll install the signature there. It's automatically detected the other files and basically verified that our version of Sparrow is ready to go. And it has actually done this in a fully self-contained way without being dependent on our installation of GPG for Win. Where it gets really useful is if we, for example, go back to the Foundation Passport firmware and download the signature for that firmware, so we'll just clear all of this out. So if we just choose the signature for the Foundation Passport file, which is this one here, a open PGP signature, uh, it has automatically loaded in the corresponding firmware binary. And we can see it's actually verified it against the public key for the Foundation Devices signer, because this public key is actually bundled with Sparrow. And the great thing here is that this provides another layer of verification on top of this firmware, where we had previously only checked the SHA-256 sum against the official GitHub page. Just anyone with Sparrow can actually verify that the files that they have downloaded from there match what has been distributed officially from Foundation Devices. And the use of this verification feature doesn't stop there. You know, right out of the box without having to do anything else, we can use Sparrow to verify things like Seed Signer, Trezor, you know, Bitbox 02, Cold Card firmware, a huge variety of useful software and hardware that can be easily verified by anyone with a Sparrow installation. And this is even before we consider the ability to import our own public keys for other projects that might not have been bundled with Sparrow. And in terms of nerding out a bit more with this feature, my favorite aspect of it is the ability to jump on to the Sparrow Wallet GitHub and actually just download this entire bundle of public keys as a single file. Basically, this is the file we just downloaded there, pubkeys.asc, and we can literally just dump this bundle of keys straight into Cleopatra and essentially import 16 public keys all at once. You know, while it's important to say we still need to go through and certify that these keys are what we expect, it is fantastic that we can just dump in a whole bunch of them all at once and have something to compare against in terms of what these keys should be for all of these projects. So having had all of that stuff set up, the very last thing I'm going to show you is how we use GPG for Win to verify an Electrum installation file. And the key thing here is Electrum is being signed by multiple different people who all are attesting that this is the correct release of the file, meaning that even if one of the signers had their uh, signing keys compromised or leaked in some way, you could still be able to download Electrum with confidence and to be able to identify the safe and correct versions of the files. So if we just head over to the official Electrum website and just download uh, both the installer for Windows and the, so I'll say save that, and the signature, I'll just save that and say save. Basically, we have the two files. And I'll just show you what it looks like, actually, if you try to verify a download when you haven't verified all of the signatures that are used in it. So if I go back here into the download folder, right-click on Electrum Setup, say Show More Options, and then say more GPG EX options and say verify, it will actually verify it for me. However, basically it says there are two signatures here that are part of this file that it needs that I do not have um, in Cleopatra. And then the last message it's giving me is saying that I do actually have this Thomas V key, but that I have not certified it. So if I go back to the Electrum website and download the three signing keys, and basically now, for example, this Thomas V key, I can just download that and put it in. And the interesting thing with this Thomas V one is you'll see that the signature we just downloaded from electrum.org is actually the same as the one from the Sparrow bundle. So it didn't actually import it again. So basically with this one, you know, we could happily certify that one now because we've actually just proven to ourselves that it's the same as the one in the Sparrow 
bundle, which is a pretty good attestation that it's the real deal. And likewise for these other two keys, we can just drag them into Cleopatra as well. And we can see that they were both imported. Now they're not yet certified. For example, just copy that key ID and Google it. And actually we can see here, there's a uh, thread on Bitcoin Talk from 2019, where people are asking, you know, is this the real thing or is it a scam? And in this case, we might look at threads like this one, where we can see this person has been associated as a signer uh, all the way back to 2021 at least. And when you're watching this video, you might notice that you're seeing the same fingerprint that I'm seeing here. So we could certify that one as well. And in terms of a web of trust, for example, if we then went to verify Electrum again and say verify, you know, we might notice that it is actually signed and fully trusted by two, at least one or two certificates that we trust. So based on that, we might also just decide that we're gonna certify this third one here, uh, just because of their positive association with the other signers. And again, the question of what level of thoroughness you go to before you certify each of the signers is ultimately something you have to work out for yourself. And again, is ultimately going to be uh, a social function in terms of how do you establish that sort of chain of trust, uh, both with people, websites, and other ways to verify that things are what they should be. So I'll close that. So now that I have certified all of the things for this file for Electrum, I can say show more options, GPGX, verify. It's going to give us the nice happy green box saying that all three of the signers certificates that we have certified match the signatures that we downloaded in this file here. So we can be fully confident that this version of Electrum is fully intact and is the one that matches what was distributed by the official team for Electrum. So we can install that with confidence. The last thing we can see with Electrum is it also has a published certificate that Windows will recognize as being valid as well. So yet another layer of protection in Electrum that can help us to verify that we are using the correct software. So we'll just say yes. So there you go. That's how you go from a fresh install of Windows to having both Sparrow and Electrum fully installed, certified and valid and having the ability to verify not only these pieces of software, but a whole range of other software as well. So there you go. As you can see, there are a variety of different tools and mechanisms that are used by different hardware and software to enable users to verify that they have the files that are both intact and correct, the official distribution rather than some wallet software containing something like malware. The most impressive thing to me is the way that wallet software like Sparrow now bundles these tools in with it, making these kinds of things much easier for the average user to use. You know, every single time a piece of wallet software or even like a hardware wallet or something else like that makes it easier for you to verify not only its integrity but the integrity of other pieces of hardware and software within the ecosystem you know everybody wins especially when these tools can decrease the amount of technical expertise required to be able to do this stuff if you have any questions about any of the processes that i've run through in this video you know just leave a reply in the comment section i do my best to reply to all of them likewise if you have any experiences uh, in sort of doing these processes that you'd like to share you know happy to have a chat about it there other than that, stay safe. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.